Okay. If you're following along with our schedule, you should not because it's changing as we go. Uh, and our next guest is not going to be Scotty Vest. It is going to be Bots Alive. So please welcome them to the stage and our moderator, Devin Coldway. All right, welcome. Uh, I think you guys are going to like this. Keep an eye on the cameras as well. We're gonna, if you can't see very well, we've got these uh, little robots here. Um, and we're going to let you see them on the overhead cameras. But uh, first, why don't you explain really quick what they are? Sure. Uh, so these are lifelike robot critters. And we are creating a smartphone kit that takes these, these Hexbug spiders, which are a popular remote control toy that's been on the market for years, and gives them artificial intelligence so that kids and adult enthusiasts can interact with them as these lifelike little creatures. And uh, so these things, and these, these are like a popular thing. They already exist. They are sold all over the place. And all you really get, all you really add is, uh, all you really need to do is add this little thing on top? That's correct. So to, to set it up, we give you the kit, and you put this decal on. You, I'll show you. Uh, there's a headphone jack uh, piece that you stick into your phone. Uh, this thing right here, and then you run the app, and then it works. Cool. And I understand there we have a video to roll. Yeah. So we can roll yeah, that video. It. It'll happen. <laughs> Wait for it. Meanwhile, we can zoom on in on there. Here we go. I love these little hexapods. Great. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I have to say, I really like that the whole thing is basically accomplished with the phone, inside the phone, and that the only thing you really add in terms of hardware is these little codes, these little, what would you call these? Uh, we call them vision blocks. Vision blocks. Yeah, yeah. These are a form of augmented reality markers, uh, but we call them vision blocks as a whole. So, uh, so show us, uh, show us what, how it works here. Sure, yeah. So just to, to intro it a little bit. So my background... Uh, I, was, I was at the me MIT Media Lab in the, the personal robots group uh, where Jibo was spun out of. And, um, and one of the things that, that I've seen as a roboticist is there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of hype um, and a lot of vaporware in, yeah. in robotics. And, um, and so I'm excited that I'll be able to show you more or less everything that you just saw in the video uh, right now. So uh, the first level here of interaction is, and notice the, the phone is the eyes and the brains for this remote control toy. And can you and tell me a little what about yeah, the, so the little device this here? This is an infrared blaster, and we basically coded it so that it can emulate the remote control that comes with the toy. Um, so basically, we're allow we're, it allows us to control it with software instead of someone pushing buttons. Um, so Handy. Yeah, so I'll put it over the robot. Um, and as long as the robot's in the frame, you'll see it, it kind of explore around. Right now, there's nothing in its environment. It's just kind of, if there's nothing there, it'll kind of roam around and, and explore. And it has a sort of, this is just sort of generic pattern that it sort of looks for stuff? Yeah, yeah, it just kind of wanders around, looks curious. Um, and then the next thing up would be uh, where I, it helps to have two hands for this. <laughs> you put, um, put a few blocks out. Sure. So you put out a blue block, and it, it likes the blue block. So it's going to make its way to the blue blocks. Um, and you'll notice uh, that as it does it, 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 its artificial intelligence is not the normal kind of artificial intelligence, where it's cold and efficient and just in a very optimal way finds its way to the goal. We want an illusion of life. We want this to feel like a really simple but lifelike critter. And so you'll see it looks around, and, and, and it hesitates, and it, it makes mistakes. Um, and, we, and we hope also it, it looks curious. The I, red block, oh, go ahead. I, well, I, just, I, think it's, I think it's really fun. This is, it's very simple behavior, but 
It's not trying to be some big crazy like, uh, oh, this robot will, you know, change your entire life. Uh, you know, here's a, a companion for your life. It's got arms and legs. It's just like, oh, it's a cool little thing that acts like it's alive and has simple behaviors that you can make complex by playing with it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. Yeah, we're part of our, our company philosophy is to manage expectations, not make any big promises that this is going to be your best friend or a new member of the family or anything like that. This is a, a lifelike critter, and you interact with it maybe similar if it was a pet tarantula, um, but it, you know, no, no danger of it biting That's you or, a little or breeding in the walls. A pet tarantula, but yeah. Um, I actually have never had a pet tarantula, so I don't know that's fair for me to compare it's it to. It's probably pretty much like this. Yeah, you just put like stick this. stuff on it and totally. have little barriers that it goes through. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see where are we a little. So, uh, and you said that there's, there's other options. If there's two, they'll, uh, they'll fight or what? Uh, yeah, so if, if there's two, there's a few things they'll do. They'll, they'll socially interact uh, by kind of the way they move together. Like if we, if we watch people... Uh, and don't have any hearing of, of what they're doing, we can kind of tell still that they're interacting socially by what's called proxemics in academia, but basically their proximity. So that's a big part of how they'll look like they're socializing. They'll also compete, kind of racing to get to the, the blue. And then our first, this is going to be crowdfunded in a few weeks. Yeah. And, um, and our first stretch goal will be sumo wrestling. So if we reach that, it's, it's like a 50,000 mark. Right. And you're, um, so you just, you just said, and you're going to, Crowdfund, are you going on Kickstarter or? Uh, we haven't made a, a final decision on that, but it'll like be late January. Late January, you're gonna be, and so you'll be able to uh, order a kit. It'll be like $35. $35 for the kit. Um, if you already have the spider, they're $25 if you don't. Um, there's millions of them already in people's hands. They've been on sale for probably seven years or so. And I see these are all uh, 3D printed. Uh, for now, yeah. Yeah. You're going to get them, like, injection molded and that's, everything? That's the default. We'll look into various options, but uh, injection molding is definitely the default. I'll show one other thing you can do here. Um, you can build it a little, you can build it a home. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, or, you know, depending on your perspective, you could also consider it a cage. So you can put it in here. This feels cruel. Kids, yeah, I think I've already developed a sort of affinity for this little guy. It's all up to your perspective. Uh, this is something that kids seem to do quite a bit. So <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, doing you this can put it in, in a, a little, uh, you know, enclosure, and it'll hang out inside that. And I think <laughs> right now we, we may not want it to look as anxious as it does right now <laughs> in the final version. We've got time to to tune that, and make it look a little little happier to be in its home. And then if we move a few blocks, it'll sort of yep. eventually find its way out. Yeah, so, yeah, it might take a moment, but it'll, it'll find its way out. See, it's fun because you can make, uh, this is something that a, a kid can tell their own stories with, kind of. Definitely, it's yeah. not telling its own stories. I like that. I think that's, that's a really good insight. I, I, I would put that kind of in the same vein as, as set it, keeping it simple. Um, and, and that I think it, it makes a little bit more of a blank canvas. Um, because it doesn't talk to you, you can imagine it having all sorts of feelings and, and desires and so on. Um, a, lot, a lot more room for imagination with it. All right. Well, it's about to push that sucker right off the table. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that that's about uh, all we have time for. Uh, but uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, look forward to checking one of these things out in person. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Devin. Yeah.